Welcome back to another Phoenix Lights. Petroglyphs in the Sky. How's everyone doing tonight? So glad you guys are here with us. So if you notice, I'm doing this live on my other channel. So uh, bear with me. I'm actually on my other channel, on my original UFO channel. I'm, uh, I got put in Facebook jail. <laughs> yep. For two months, man. Can you believe it? I can't go live or any of that on my on my UFO page. So I had to uh, uh, change uh, my music page into my second UFO page uh, because of this. So uh, a friend of mine, Doug, gave me a really cool knife, right, for my birthday. Mailed it out to me. And uh, I post some stuff on Facebook saying, hey, cool knife. You know, it's great. You know, love it. Thanks, Doug. I really appreciate the gift. And somehow or another, Facebook took it out of contents and thought I was uh, doing terrorist threats. And I don't know. It was crazy. And so they put me in, in, in Facebook jail for two months, man. I couldn't go live. I couldn't do anything. So actually, I still have like 10 more days until I'm out of, uh, until I'm out of jail on Facebook. On my UFO channel. Oh well, I still got this channel. So yeah, we are broadcasting live from my second channel. Glad you guys are here. And uh, so yeah, uh, we just got back from Tombstone, Arizona. That was so great. I want to give a shout out to all the people who uh, came out and did seance with us and, and, and participated in the UFO show that I had out there. And just Tombstone was just great. And uh, they were so accommodating to us. And uh, I can't say enough of, of appreciation for Tombstone. I, I really tell you what, uh, they really uh, hit it out of the ballpark. Um, and I just wish to uh, give, give out my many thanks to Tombstone. And uh, so, yeah, I was the very first show uh, at the Tombstone, first ever Tombstone Paracon. Let's see if I can bring this up real quick. Let's see if this is it. Yeah, nope, that's not it. We got it somewhere. There we go. Yeah, it was great. First ever, Tombstone Wild West Paracon. Um, I had a lot to do uh, with everything, and it was great. And I was the first one uh, to do uh, the show there, uh, to, to do the um, uh, guest speakers, if you will. And uh, so, yeah, we knocked it out of the ballpark, man. It was great. We had a wonderful time. Uh, Tombstone is just great. Can't wait to get back there next year. And, uh, you know, just a shout out, huge shout out to Tombstone for having us and, uh, and everything that you guys did for us. Uh, man, you, you guys just went beyond, uh, you know, so it was just great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope to, hope to be back there next year. And uh, thank you all uh, for the people who came out and did the seance with us and did the uh, and, and, and was a guest. Um, during the UFO show, it was so cool, man. I'm so glad, and I, and we we met a lot of great people, and uh, yeah. So thank you guys so much. <clears throat> so we have a great show for you tonight. Um, uh, we're gonna talk about some UFO sightings, and uh, let's get things going on. Um, so yeah, what are we gonna talk about first? So let's talk about the book. Let's get the books out of the way. So the Phoenix Lights, I have no idea why this is upside down or backwards. Maybe I can switch it around. There we go. <laughs> can you tell? I haven't been in the studio in a couple months. I've been working on the Tombstone project. And uh, so, yeah, we haven't gone live. We haven't done the show here in a while uh, because I've been working on Tombstone. And uh, so, yeah, I just can't say enough. Man, it was so great. And uh, so, yeah, come check out the Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky, the Covered Up History of Phoenix, Arizona. Volume one and two. This is the ebook. It's only three bucks, dude, and it's got over a thousand pages of it. And uh, there's actually two books. And uh, so yeah, um, you can find that on on uh, Amazon Kindle. And I also have another book. I don't think I have it listed here. Uh, called The Phoenix Lights: True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs Over Phoenix. That is a hard copy. That's actually the movie. So when I first wrote this book, it took me like 15 years of research and work into this book. Lots of hiking on the mountain. Lots of sky watching. Um, 
lots of petroglyph investigations, things like that. So yeah, it took it took a very long, uh, very long time to put this book together. And when it finally did get it all together, you know, I, I went looking for a publisher. It took me five years to find one. Uh, when I finally did, uh, they didn't want to publish the whole thing. They only published the movie part of it. And, uh, and that's what's out. Um, that's what the hard and soft cover books are on um, eBay. Uh, when you search my name, Jeff Woolwan, on eBay and Kindle, you can find both my books. And uh, so that, that's basically what had happened. And so it took me another, what, 10 years to figure out how to publish my own book, how to get it up on, you know, uh, Amazon, Kindle, things like that. So it was a very long process. Okay. It wasn't easy. I mean, nobody taught me how to do this. I did everything on my own. And uh, it was a very long and, and painful process, but we finally got it all together. Um, so, yeah, uh, The Phoenix Lights, True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs of a Phoenix. That is the movie. Hopefully one day uh, Hollywood will pick that up and actually make a movie of the petroglyphs and Phoenix and the true history of Phoenix. And then for more in-depth investigation on what's going on, uh, we have The Phoenix Lights. Uh, the cover-up history of Phoenix, Arizona. And yes, there's a big cover-up here in Phoenix, Arizona as far as uh, the real history. And it talks about what the Phoenix Lights are and gives great in explanations of the petroglyphs. What else do we got going on here? Okay, yeah, so we also run another channel on, on YouTube and on Facebook called Haunted Encounter Adventures. Check us out there. If you like haunted places, if you like ghost hunts and things like that and, and seances and all kinds of stuff, uh, my wife and I, we take off and we go do um, ghost hunting and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, Haunted Encounter Adventures, check us out there. And uh, make sure you stop by and say hi. What else we got going on? Okay, so let's start this going on. So, oh, where's that picture at? I don't know if I... Am I not ready? Is the picture is not there? Okay, so what is this? This is the video. So when I was watching, everybody was watching this news report, right? A few months ago, a few weeks ago, when uh, you know that stuff going on over there in UK and stuff, you know, and and uh, with Russia and, and the jets and all this stuff, and and this one jet um, coming around and and dropping uh, fuel on one of our United States drones and stuff like that. Well, I'm watching this, right? And as I'm watching it, I'm noticing something else was in the picture. Here we can see the jet coming up. Right there is a jet. But over here... Okay, here we go. There it is, right there. See that orb? Look at that orb. Maybe we can pause it. Yeah, right there. I noticed this orb, right? <laughs> what the hell is going on, man? Is this one of those Foo Fighters? Right? So, yeah, these things are watching what's going on here. Look at that. Look at that thing, right? There it is. So, yeah, these things are watching, definitely, which, definitely watching... Uh, what's going on here? Um, and that's you know that's that's the pattern with these things. I mean, every time man seems to go to war with each other, uh, these things come and in, in, in increase in volume, and there's like more of them. We start to see more of them, and it has everything to do with the times that uh, we're we're living in today. See, look at that. Look at that thing. I circled it. Look at that. Is that crazy? Let's watch it again real quick. It should play it again. <clears throat> here it is let's watch this again so and this isn't the first time there is many ufo sightings uh around these military jets and um here it is there it is right there you can see it you see that it's kind of hard to get the arrow on it there it is Look at that sucker, dude. Like, what the hell is he doing there, right? And you know these pilots have got to be seeing this stuff. And a matter of fact, when I was doing the UFO show in, in Tombstone, I, I opened up the show with a news report of one of the pilots uh, that's talking about these things that he sees on a, on a regular basis. 
And uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to bring this out to to the attention of everyone that, yeah, there is an, a UFO orb there. There is an orb. And you can see it there. Is that crazy or what? Pretty cool. These things are here and they're watching what's going on. Okay. So I've I've had some viewers send me some uh some UFO sightings. Let's let's take a look. What's which one is this one? Okay, so this one's Christina. I believe the she's living out there in California. And I believe her and her daughter saw this object. I thought this was pretty cool. We have seen these things, this type of light before, uh, in the skies. So this isn't, you know, anything uh uh, surprising because this is a common light orb. I've been catching this light orb not only in Phoenix, uh, but other places that I've uh, visited. And uh, so, yeah, this light orb uh, seems to be um... now we lost it. <laughs> I will find it. Yeah, so this great picture, great video, you guys. Uh, good job filming it. Great job seeing it. If you guys see any more, please contact me. And you know, California, along with Arizona, is, is a very uh, hot spot. Is a major hot spot for these things. And why is it? Why is it? Anyone? Anyone? Because of the fault lines, right? Because of the energy. There's so many fault lines, especially in California, right? And they, that's what these things are attracted to: is these fault lines uh, around the Earth. And so, yeah, it's only natural that we're going to be seeing these things. Uh, during these energy sources, these energy places. This is a great video. Uh, so glad you guys sent this in to me. Thank you so much. And if you guys and anybody sees any any good vi videos of UFOs, please contact me. Let's talk about it. Let's show it. Let's get this information out. Yeah, great video out there in California. And uh, keep watching. More is coming. All right, let's take a look at another one. This one, let's see, we'll put that one away for just a second. And this one is cool. This one was filmed in Phoenix by Steve Wells. Good guy, man. He came out and was part uh, uh, of the UFO show out there in Tombstone. Um, thank you so much for coming out, man. It was great meeting you. And, uh, man, you're awesome. And let's take a look at this. He filmed something uh, pretty fantastic. And let's go ahead and, and play this. Let's look at this building first. I remember this building here is so cool in Phoenix. Doesn't that look like the first, and it is, I mean, it's the first uh, computer card back in the 80s, right? I remember being a kid and driving down. This is on Central Avenue. I know exactly where this building is. And I remember uh, driving down on Central with my mom. And uh, passing this building like all the time. And I just thought it was so cool. And it's actually rounded too. It's rounded just like uh, those cards were. And uh, isn't that cool? Love that building. I'm so glad that it's still standing today. Because uh, I was there when I was a kid. You know? Okay. So let's get to what Steve filmed. Man, this is crazy. He did a great job filming this. Uh, let's take a look at what's in the skies. Let's, let's, let's move this down a little bit more. So we can get a good idea. Okay, let's go ahead and play this. There we go. There's. Yeah, look at that. We have this orb there. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. It's right there. These red lights are going over Central in downtown Phoenix. There's one there. Here comes another one. Look at that. Great video. Great video. Thank you, Steve, for, for bringing this to my attention. Isn't that great? See, look. There we go. Right on. There's, an, there's two of them. Look at that. Let's, let's enhance this. There you go. This is great stuff, man. There is another one right there. Great, great stuff. And they're going right over 
right over Phoenix, man. This is such a cool video. Love this video. You, you did a great job on this. Please let me know if you see any more. And always, always make sure you have that camera ready, man. Because those things are going to show up. And uh, <laughs> so many times I've been out there. And uh, I won't, don't have a camera. But there will be a fleet of, uh, of orbs out there. And I just don't have a camera. So, yeah, you always want to bring a camera with you. And uh, you want to try to use a video camera, not a cell phone. Uh, you know, because video cameras, you can zoom in on these things and get a good uh, perspective on what you're looking at. And always try to get a, a good viewfinder, too. Uh, you want to get a good video camera with a viewfinder because you got one of those with a window. That glare is going to be in, in the in, in the window, and uh, it, it's just not feasible. It's, it, window cameras just aren't good for UFO uh, videos, UFO hunting, uh, because you really need to get a bird's eye view on what's going on. And once you get that viewfinder going on, then you can zoom in on the thing and you can uh, get a better perspective. And the sun won't be in your glare, it won't be in your eyes, and won't be any glare on the screen. So yeah, viewfinder video camera. Very cool, Steve. Great job, brother. Right on. Let me know if you guys see any more. And if you guys have anything you want to share, please send it to me. I'd love to take a look at it. And uh, if I like it, I will t surely talk about it. You know, I've got this other video. I'm not sure what happened to it. Maybe I'll have to... Uh, maybe it's not ready here. Let me... Uh, which one's... That one's mine. Okay, let's put that aside there. There was one more video I wanted to show you guys. And I guess I didn't load it. So we're going to load it up right now. Okay, let me let me look at this. Let's see if we can get this going here. I thought it was already loaded up in the system, but I guess not. So let me let me bring it up here. Here we go. Yeah, let's check this out real quick. A fleet of UFOs were spotted in Las Vegas last night um, by my friend Christine, and they came from behind the mountains uh, north. They were orange. They were getting in formation, and then they just started going whatever way they wanted to. She said when it started, it was around 9 p.m., and it lasted for around 45 minutes last night. And she saw them fly over the strip. And she was wondering, did anyone else see these flying over there? She was out on her patio with her neighbor. And she got some wonderful, wonderful documentation. A fleet of UFOs. She said there's around 50 of them. This is a snapshot. Look at that. Look at that. Is that crazy or what? We're going to now look at the footage that was documented by her and her neighbor. Look at them. Yeah, look at them. Yeah. I've seen these things before. Well, there's more. Oh, God, here comes more. There's more. We found the People. exact same type of sighting. Look and at more. Oh, and more. Oh dear God, look at this. This is amazing. What's going on? Oh, they're coming from there. Isn't that great? Look at this. They're so quiet. Oh, Holy cow, oh, look oh. at that. This is the exact same thing that we've seen. Wow, Eddie. Where is it coming? Is that cold or what? Look at all these words. Look at them. Oh my God, this is so oh, amazing. Look, they They're moving in all different directions. Where are they going? Uh, this is so amazing. This is a good shot of them. Holy cow. Where are they going? I need to go back up to my window. Look at this. Look how many is that. Is that crazy or what? That 
That is insane stuff. Something. Oh, this is what is it? We have to look at the, the three credibility. Oh, she's going to do it again. So let's see. We can fast forward her. So we have to look at the three points of credibility, right? Not hearsay. And what are they? One, we can read about these things in some of these ancient scripts, right? From... 3,000 to 7,000 years ago. Talking about the Anunnaki. Things like this. And then we can go out on the petroglyphs on some of these sacred mountains, right? And we can see the photographs of what these scriptures are talking about. What these biblical texts and what these uh, carvings and other interpretations are, right? So that's two. That's two credibility. And the third credibility is... We see him from our for our own eyes, right? We see him with our own eyes. So that's that's three things right there. Stuff that was written like three to seven thousand years ago. Now we see the photographs, the prehistoric photographs of the petroglyphs on the mountains, on some of these sacred mountains, right? Talking about what these ancient scrolls are talking about. And then now we see them in the skies, right? So that is the three pyramid of credibility. Not hearsay, not some person, it's just interpretation. This stuff right here has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Way before mankind has even been here. And I'm telling you that these things are not from outer space. I find it fascinating that all these scientists and all these sky watchers are looking for uh, intelligent life on the outskirts of our solar system, but what if we should start turning our cameras inward and start looking in our own backyard instead of outer space? What if these things are inner space, right? What if they're not from another planet? What if this is their world too? What if they live here too? What if they've always been here? I mean, Native Americans have been telling us all these years, man, they're going up on that mountain and talking to spirits. They're talking about these things. They're talking about these things here that we're seeing in the skies today. Absolutely. That's what the petroglyphs are talking about. You know, there once was, there once was writing. We don't hear this very much. We don't talk about it very much. But there was writing. The Native Americans did at one time have writing. But the story on that goes like this. Let's try to Move her up a little bit. Here we go. The story on this goes like this. Because, you know, I mean, like, let's look at the history. Let's look at the history of this. 
So when the first Native Americans arrived here in Phoenix, right, they didn't know how to live, supposedly. So these things came down from the sky. They came up from the sand, up out of the sand world, and they taught these people how to survive, right? And in doing so, they also taught them the secret incantations, secret chants, secret words. And these words had the power to actually move stuff with words, right? And this would explain like Stonehenge and some of this other stuff, these huge blocks, right? How do these, how do these people move? One, either they were giants, which we all know that there were, but what if they had magic words to actually raise these boulders up? I mean, look at the Superstition Mountains, right? Look at the, um, um, look at the evidence there. So the story on that talks about the giants when the giants were here, and the and the biblical flood was coming. And the giant didn't want his people to, to to drown, so he told his people to come up on this huge rock. And when he did, he used his powers, he used his magical chance to raise this mountain up, but the water kept coming. He raised that mountain so high, it was as high as a mountain. I mean, it was a boulder, right? <laughs> but now he rode, he raised that boulder so high, but the water kept coming. And in his last bit of strength, because he didn't want his people to drown, he immortalized them. He turned them all to stone. And when he did, that's when the water stopped. And to this day, when you look upon the Superstition Mountains, you can see that water line where the water had stopped. And when you look right above that water line, you can still see those giants still there today turned to stone. Right? And how did he do it? He used his magical powers. He used these secret into, secret chants. Well, that went on for like a while. And they started writing down these chants on rocks and, and, and papers and stuff like that, right? They're, they're writing down these magical words. Until now they start blaming it on the juveniles. They blame it on the kids that the kids were moving mountains with these magical words. They were picking up mountains and putting them somewhere else, right? And the story goes to say that these things, these lights, these shape-shifting entities, these living creatures, this Quetzalcoatl, the flying diamonds, the flying orbs that morph, that change, they didn't like that. They didn't like what was going on. They were misusing their power. So they abolished that language. And that language, those secret chants, those secret incantations, was forever forgotten and not talked about anymore. So instead of writing down what was going on, now they draw pictures. And that's where the petroglyphs come in. That's where the petroglyphs come in. So yeah, that's basically what had happened. I mean, yes, there was words that they were writing down, but it was magical words. But they were misleading, they are not misleading, they were misusing this power. And these beings in the sky, the holy ones, they call them, the holy ones, the holy ones took this knowledge away from them because they were abusing the power. Now look what my wife and I saw in Glendale, Arizona. Take a look at this. The exact same type of, of uh, lights that we just saw from that lady. And look, this is what we saw. Right? Is that crazy? The exact same stuff. No, not as many as, as what they saw. <laughs> Same stuff. Isn't that crazy? This is what we're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. This is the kind of stuff that we need to pay attention for, that we need to keep watch out for. 
These lights in the sky. Look at that. Look, see? Look at that orb there. We are seeing the exact same stuff. And it's in, in my mind, in, in, in studying the rock art and studying everything, I believe these are the same entities. These are the same creatures that the Holocom Indians were seeing and were interacting with. I don't believe these, these beings die. I think these are the exact same ones. These things are ancient, right? These things don't die. They have always been with us. Pretty cool. Okay, that'll that's gonna wrap it up for tonight's show. It's a quick show, I know, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to get this out there. Look at that. Is that cool? Look at those things, right? That is something. So I'm gonna leave you with this, and uh, thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye bye. We can find our music. All right, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Look on me. Thank mm -hmm. you.